All right, so in this video, we're going to work on getting our player to face the direction that he's moving in. And so in order to understand that, the first thing we're going to need to do is have a better representation of which way the player is facing. I mean, you could click on the player and make sure this is on local and make sure you have the move tool and then watch that arrow, but that only shows up in the scene view. So we should add a better visual indication of which way the player is facing anyhow. So what I'm going to do is move this back so that there's just a single view here. Go back to my scene view and let's just make a quick like representation of which way our player is facing in Pro Builder. So I'm going to hit Control Shift K and get the uh, new shape tool. And I'm going to build a cone, I think just because a cone is kind of pointing in a direction. And actually, I'm going to cancel this one. One thing about the Pro Builder Shape Tool is it'll come in by default based on where the camera is focused. So if you select a game object that's in the vicinity of where you want the new shape to appear, and then you press the F key to focus the camera on that object, and then you hit Control shift k you can see the new shape is going to appear right in that area, which kind of saves me some moving around, I guess. Uh, and so I'm going to make this one meter tall and one meter wide, um, but it's unclear what the best settings here are. We'll start with this. So I'm going to build the thing and then I'll close the shape tool and I want to rotate it so that it is uh, pointing in a direction. So what I guess what I'm going to do is let's make this a child of our uh, player. This is actually would have been a better way to get it to move where I want faster. So now it's a child of the player. I can right click its transform and hit reset, which will put it on zero 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 of the player. And then I'm going to rotate this thing. I'm going to hold control. Um, let me just confirm which way my player is facing here. Uh, okay, so the player's facing that way. You can see why we need to fix this problem. So I, I make sure you're in local so you can and then click your player. You'll see which way the player's facing. All right, so I'm going to take this cone and I'm going to rotate it. 90 degrees this way. If you hold control, you can get the snaps. Um, so now it's rotated. I'm going to then move it. My grid is on 0 0.5, which I think will let me get something kind of in the middle of the player. And then I'll move it forward a little like that. And that pretty much helps me understand which way the player's facing. I guess maybe what I could do is get the scale tool and scale it down. I'm going to, well, that's fine. Yeah, we'll scale them down a little. <laughs> and uh, let's look at the back view of this thing. And I'll hit F. Um, it's not quite, it doesn't seem to be quite on the zero of my player. Um, maybe I'll just kind of eyeball this. So let's get the move tool and I'm going to turn snapping off for a second. Okay, that's pretty close enough. Let's get out of this isometric view. And there's our weird cone head, man. Um, I'm going to change the color of it just because it's easy and just to help it stand out. So I make sure I have object mode selected. I have this cone selected and I'm going to go to the vertex colors. We can just make it red. And there we go. So now if I run the game, uh, you will see that the player is always facing the same direction. He's not facing which way he moves. 
So that's what we're going to fix. So to fix it, we're going to have to go into the code. I'll stop my game, go back to this rigid body character controller. All right, so the basic strategy we're going to use here is to just make a variable that represents the rotation we want to face. So we'll say var target rotation equals quaternion dot look rotation and then use that camera relative input direction that we created earlier. So this will give us back a rotation that is facing the direction of our input, which is the direction the player's moving. And our whole goal is to get the player to face the way they're moving. So now we have a rotation that represents that. And then the next thing we have to do is just set our trans, oops, sorry. We have to set our transform dot rotation equal to this target rotation. So this will get us a lot of the way there. Let's uh, save it and test it. And you'll see how it works. So I'm running the game. And if I press forward, I would expect the player to turn and face the direction they're going. Uh, and so it works. But there's a caveat uh, being one, it's just snapping, which doesn't look great. And the other issue is that if I let go, every time I let go, the player immediately springs back to face uh, a different direction. And that's not desirable either. We want the player to remain facing the last direction they were walking in, not pop back and face that original direction. So we can fix both these things. Um, let's go, let's stop the game and go back to the code. Okay, so to fix the player popping back when we stop moving, what we need to do is wrap this logic inside of an if statement that checks uh, and only applies the code if the player is pressing a direction, an input direction. So the problem is coming from the fact that this is getting applied every frame and update and every fixed update, even when the player's not trying to move, which means if the player's not trying to move, this will be based on a vector that has a zero zero input, uh, which will cause them to spring back and look in that direction, which is not what we want. So what we'll do is we'll say if um, input direction, I guess we can look at the camera relative input direction dot magnitude is greater than zero. So in other words, that means the player is actually doing something. Um, oops. And we will cut these lines and paste them back in there. So let's save this and test if it fixes that first problem. Oops. All right, so now if I let go of the move button, the player stays facing the direction that they were already facing. So that's correct and good. The next problem is to adjust it so it's not so rigid as it rotates. We want it to rotate smoothly. So let's stop our game, go back to the code. Oh, actually, before I do this, you see this little error? It has to do with using a mesh. Pro Builder uses mesh colliders by default, and so we can't have a mesh collider on a rigid body unless it's marked as convex. But really, we don't really need any collision on this little uh, cone because the only point of this cone is to visually represent which direction the player is facing. It's not meant to have any bearing on gameplay. So if I run the game now, that should get rid of that. All right, cool. All right, let's go back to the code. And now we're trying to fix it so that it 
transitions more s- smoothly instead of just popping into the direction that the players face. And so in order to do that, rather than just applying the target rotation, what we're going to do is uh, use the quaternion.lerp function to get a value that is closer to the target rotation than it was previously. And that way it'll like incrementally get to the target rotation rather than just popping directly to it. So we'll get that smoother transition. Uh, so what we will do is instead of setting it straight to the target rotation, we'll set it equal to quaternion dot lerp. Oops. There we go. And you can see that the way quaternion dot lerp works is it'll interpolate between A and B parameters by T, which is like a the interpolant <laughs> it's how 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 fast it will transition between a and b so uh a is going to be the current rotation so uh transform dot rotation b is going to be the target rotation and then t here should be a new variable that we don't have um so we can call it like turn speed and so this thing doesn't exist yet so we need to create it and one way to do that would be to hit control period to get these quick fixes going and we could generate a field for turn speed and so I clicked that and it did it but in order to see what it did we can hit F12 which will go to the definition or you could right click and you could choose go to definition. You can see it's hot key F12. And so here is our new turn speed field. But I'm actually going to move it up here uh, because I want it to be a serialized field. Because this is something that it makes sense that the designer might want to fine tune as they play test. And we can set this to an initial value. So if you look at the documentation of this, it will explain uh, the documentation of this quaternion.lerp. So I'll pull that up. You can see that T is clamped between 0 and 1. So if we passed in 1, it will give us that uh, same snapping behavior that we're seeing. Uh, and zero would be it just is never moving at all. It's not rotating, period. So what we can do, you know, at this point, the designer could put in whatever value they wanted. Let's pass in a, a reasonable default um, that's between zero and one. But at this point, the designer and the editor could change this to anything. Like if I save it and I go over here to Unity, you will see on our player I could try to put in like 99 as my turn speed which isn't gonna work so rather than allow that to happen um, what we can do as programmers is set up our code to be foolproof and so actually in order to do that I'm gonna go under my serialized field attribute here and add another attribute this one is going to be called range and this way we can pass in the valid range for this particular field uh, except it's not meant to be on the uh, physics materials here I misclicked we want it to be on the turn speed alright so now turn speed should have this 0 to 1 range and if you want to see what that looks like in the editor you can save go back to unity when it's done compiling, you should see a slider. And you'll see the far left would be 0, and the far right is 1. Now there's one more thing I want to do to clarify this. Uh, if I go back to my code, I can add another um, attribute here. This time it's going to be a tooltip. And this will really help document what how this works, how this turn speed works. And so we'll say that 
0 equals no turning and 1 equals uh, snapping instant turning all right and so now if we save this I guess I could do even better I could say like how fast the player turns this kind of is redundant in my mind because we did a good job naming the variable to begin with but whatever all right anyway let's go back to unity after we saved now you'll see the tooltip if you were to mouse over uh, turn speed you can see the tooltip so I like to provide documentation anytime I think there's any kind of um, possibility for confusion so this uh, the best way to document serialized fields in my opinion is with the tooltip feature here because not only will that show up for the designer and the editor but it's sitting here in code too if I ever need to remember what the heck turn speed does all right so I guess we should test the thing um, let's go back to unity and run the game and see if let's see I have like 0.115 as my turn speed let's just see how it works and you can see a much smoother turning uh, and let's try pulling it all the way to one and now we're back to that snappiness just like we promised in the tooltip drag it all the way down to zero it's not even able to turn uh, so you can you know adjust what you think looks good and now the player is facing the direction they move in all right so the last thing I want to do is something I should have been doing in the previous videos but I've neglected to I want to make a good example of making a commit so we finished a notable feature here right the player faces the direction they move this is the perfect time to make a commit really I should be making a commit after each of these videos uh, which I kind of have been I just haven't necessarily been doing it on the video so this is just an opportunity to make that example one thing I noticed right off the bat I have these like extra white space lines here that's not good practice so I'm gonna fix it before I commit it actually Let's just go back into the code and delete that and really another thing at this point I don't need this example anymore this was just an alternative way of uh, expressing the same logic here so I'm gonna get rid of that and now I'm going to save it it's a good idea to not include commented code in your like commented out code rather in your code that you commit um, so just delete the old code and if you need to save it you can you know add an, a to do or something that explains why it's being left there uh, but in this case it's not necessary uh, make sure I save go back to github desktop you can see now I got rid of that and I got rid of my extra white space and we're gonna describe what we did um, player faces well it's the player character player character faces movement dire direction okay we can commit this and push it and now we are safe alright I'm gonna stop the video here